What's up, everybody? Welcome to my second game development log. In this video, I'm going to use the computer and show you the tools I'm going to be using and talk a bit more about the philosophy. I'm going to be making a 3D game and trying to recreate some fun experiences I've had while I'm playing games. 3D games are harder to make, so this isn't really recommended. Normally, you should start your game development in 2D, but personally, I just I, I don't like 2D games as much. I don't get as much into them, and because the focus here is about doing something that I enjoy, I'm just going to bite the bullet and do the thing that takes longer. But I got a plan for dealing with this, and I've accounted for everything, and I think it's going to work out. So let's get into the overview. I'll show you a bit about Blender and Unity, two free tools that you can use to make video games. The tool that's most important that I get familiar with and enjoy using is this, Blender. Blender is an amazing piece of software, not just because of what it can do, but because of how it's run. It's open source, free, and honestly, amazing. You can use Blender, make stuff, sell it, and never pay Blender anything. That's totally fine and perfectly legal. And with Unity, the game development en engine that I've picked, it's a similar situation. Once you get kind of big, you do have to start paying them more money, but you can actually start using the tool and using it and getting deep in game dev without ever spending any money on software. All you really need is a half modern computer. That's it. You don't need like a great computer. Yeah, stuff will take longer for you to render, but there's ways you can work around this. And for me, the most important thing is getting in the habit of enjoying, as I mentioned in the first devlog, I'm not focus on making a specific game to convince people I can make games and convince myself I can do it. No, what I want is to establish the habit that leads to making a game. So this tool is really critical. And the more time I spend in Blender, the better I will be when I get into the nitty gritty of making my game because I want to make a 3D game. And this goes all against what you're supposed to do because you're supposed to start with 2D because it's much simpler. You can learn lessons and waste less time just faster. But again, I'm trying to make an experience I enjoy. And it's true, I I've played some good two-dimensional games, but I just don't get into them the same way I get into a 3D game like the first time I played Ocarina of Time, or a game like Dark Souls, or Morrowind, or any Elder Scrolls game, or even something like World of Warcraft. I mean, for me personally, the reason I left RuneScape for World of Warcraft as like a 12-year-old kid or whatever I was, was because 3D was just cooler. That was it at the end of the day. It wasn't about the games, it was about how they looked and not 3D graphics, I don't care about fancy graphics, it's just I can enjoy the experience more if I'm first person seeing a three-dimensional world, I can look around and move around. That's what I really get into as a gamer, so I know it's what I want to make as a game developer. But there's a lot of hurdles because 3D is something you, you really don't normally just go right into. So that's why I got to figure out this first obstacle. How do I get in the habit of being comfortable making 3D models? Because a lot of the work is doing this part. So if you're comfortable making models, you can do it quickly, then you'll be able to use the stuff you need whenever you need to make it in Unity instead of buying packs and making stuff that doesn't have a, a visual style. I want to make stuff and people are like, oh yeah, that's one of Jack Pittman's games. Like they just know by looking at it because of the style. Uh, it's like a brand, right? A really good brand is very recognizable. Someone can just look at a screenshot and know, okay, yeah, that's exactly what that is. And that's not really possible to do if you're not making your own graphics. And for me, I really like this kind of stuff. So I know I'll be able to enjoy it. And the way I'm going to do this is something we'll 
you'll see in the next devlog. Um, I'm basically doing this 30 day challenge. And yeah, the next devlog will probably be around a month away. Um, and basically what I do is I make one three dimensional object every day. But really I could make like five in one day and then not make any for the next, it's fine. Really what I'm just doing is I'm making 30 different 3D objects using Blender by following some basic YouTube tutorials. So I'll show you a quick example. We go to YouTube and then Blender make a, let's say something simple, a flower. Look at this, there's loads of tutorials. See, and this is a great segue into the next thing we need to study. And the thing I need to keep in mind, which is low poly 3D modeling. Low poly modeling is really important for indie developers because you basically take advantage of color and more abstract stuff so that you get the player's brain to make the scenes and kind of put some details that aren't there on top of them um, without you having to program and make all the details yourself. So it's a way of being like leaning more into the artsy side of keeping things very simple. This is actually a great example of low poly. Like if we just look at this terrain real quick, let's go to the end so we can see a rendered screenshot of it. Here we go. This is exactly what you want to focus on if you're constrained by being an indie developer and you're the only one working on your project, right? You, you need to be able to make assets quickly, but also be able to understand enough of the visuals to be like, okay, but what makes things beautiful? Because I don't know about you, but I think this is very pretty. I'm not saying it's like perfect, amazing, impossible to find stuff, but I love this. I think it's beautiful and I know that it's fast to make compared to making realistic, lifelike, and I can't do that. I can't make little things with loads of polygons, but I can learn this art style of making very simple things, like, you know, a low poly rock, a low poly tree, a low poly pond, this kind of stuff. And by being able to consecutively churn out low poly models, I'll be able to test the things that I'm interested in trying in Unity, all right? So now that we've talked about Blender and also about um, low poly a bit, oops, let's actually look at Unity. Because Blender is the tool to make assets, but Unity is the tool to make the game itself, okay? So the great thing about making a game in Unity is one, there's loads of tutorials, tons of free resources, like if you wanna make your own assets, you wanna do it faster, not take forever like I do, then you can buy assets on Unity. You can just get low poly artwork and low poly models that other people have made and then do stuff with them. There is so much information and so many resources online. It's really, really great stuff. So I just wanted to open up like basic Unity, but as you can tell, there's other things I need to do. I haven't run it yet. Um, and it's gonna be overwhelming, guys. If you're following along and you're, you, you've done this kind of thing as well, then you're gonna open up these tools and just be floored by all the things you have to do and it's gonna be confusing and don't worry about it. Seriously, you'll, you'll figure it out. Just focus on the parts you enjoy. How do you get into the habit of doing those things, right? So here we go. I've established I'm using Unity. I'm doing 3D, even though you're not supposed to do that. You're supposed to start with 2D because it's much simpler. It's much easier to get going. And the amount of work to make and publish a 2D game is just way less compared to making and publishing a 3D game. But again, I'm not focused on just publishing something. I want a simple thing, okay? I wanna be able to play a game that I'm making and then be like, oh, That'd be cool if I did this. Uh, maybe it'd be fun to try this. And then to be able to try it, change it, and then play it and see how it feels. I wanna be able to do that. Cause I know that it's just like a garden. When I moved into a house that had a yard, I inevitably started gardening. But when I lived in houses that didn't have a yard, 
How was I supposed to know I liked to garden? I didn't have the resources and the environment that would allow me to do so. So what I'm trying to do now is set up these habits. Now, how am I gonna do that? Because as you can tell, this is all kind of abstract. How am I gonna get myself to do this? And it's simple. The next video is gonna be me showing you the assets that I made. And then I know you, you might be like, but Jack, you're just gonna waste these assets. You're just gonna make things and then not use them. And yeah, that's exactly what I'm gonna do. Cause I know the mind games that will trick me. And if I try and make some perfect crap or I try and only make things that I'm gonna use in my game, that, that's silly. I need to work on the skill, the skill sets that will produce my game. I need to get good at these things. And then it will be much easier for me to be picky about stuff later. I can deal with that later. But for now, all that matters is getting in the habit of making these things. I need to be able to be like, all right, palm tree, boom, 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 boom. Five, 10 minutes later, here's a ghetto ass palm tree, yeah. And then just do that whenever I need something. I wanna study a bit about animation so I can do some simple animations just to kind of give things a feel. Uh, personally, I've been really inspired by videos like this, like lo-fi chill video game music. And if you look at the animations, Let's go with something like this one. I'll turn this off. Now, okay, this is a very simple animation loop, right? And you can see here, this too is a very simple animation loop, right? And it adds so much life to the scene. The difference of like a, a photo like this, right? If just these waves were a bit less intense and these trees were swaying a little bit in the breeze and maybe this mist was fading in and out, very subtle, simple animations that totally change the feel that you get when you're playing the game. And these are all things I really wanna focus on. It's definitely stuff I've noticed when I'm playing games. So that's it for this devlog. I know that was kind of intense, but again, these aren't really for you guys, to be honest. I just watch the devlog so that I get back in the headspace that I need to be to set up my habits properly to produce what I want to produce, okay? If you're into consulting with me or anything like that, I offer consulting services. They are $20 per 30-minute session, and you can book one of those at any point convenient to you by going to calendly.com slash Pittman. All right, that's it for now. I hope you guys have a good day. All right, I don't know who you are watching this, but thanks. Um, reach out to me. You know, you can send me an email at jackpitmannika at gmail.com. And just honestly, if you're watching this, you're probably interested in game development. And I'm trying to find people I can just kind of chat with. I'm not trying to get into a team now because I see how most teams don't work. But I do want to kind of get more connected with other people interested in this thing because there's going to be points in the future where, you know, once I've made a game, I want to start assembling a team to work on the games I really want to make. Um, I got some ideals and stuff, and I believe that I can essentially take the people from the developed countries who are really privileged and kind of spoiled, let's say, and I can get them to enjoy a video game I've made, and then I can take the money f that they pay into that game and somehow get it into the pockets of people in countries like Nicaragua. Um, I know that it's possible to use a game to kind of, to bridge the gap between the first and the third world. I just kind of got to figure out more about how to do that. And that's a really long-term thing. I know that the point where I'm able to do that kind of crap, I'm not just making a game that I have never made before. That's after I've made like two or three games. I really know what I'm doing. Um, totally, totally future related stuff. But my point here is just reach out if, you know, this kind of thing is interesting to you because the fact that you're watching this part of the video, you're really one of very few. Like this video will get like maybe one to 200 views in the first two or three weeks and then basically nothing after that. And of those people, um, only a few of them, literally two or three of them, will watch a full video to this point. 
So there's something about you that has made you unlike other people and you can leverage this. There's ways that you can work with other people like you who are interested in this kind of thing. So think about it, okay? Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.